we, we knew, has decided to go with Chebukati's uh, mis misinterpretation of the law. I say that for the simple reason that the committee recognizes the authority of the High Court, but then purports to explain what the High Court's decisions on these issues are. It's not a competent committee to explain to the High Court what the law is. It's a committee that is supposed to comply with what the High Court has determined to be the law in this country. And I must say this, that why we are not surprised with that decision, the chairman of the committee, George Murugo, is a personal lawyer for Afula Chebukati in petition 33 of 2021, Hele Falifa versus Wafula Chebukati before the High Court of Kenya. That case is seeking to commit Wafula Chebukati to court for contempt of court in refusing to open the service as was ordered by the Supreme Court of Kenya in the year 2017, petition number one of 2017, Raila Odinga versus IABC. In that case, George Murugu is representing Wafula Chebukati. That is the man that Chebukati brought to court, his own personal lawyer, to come and sit as a judge in a case in which he was accused of disregarding the law. I mean, do you expect <laughs> such a person to be any fair when his paymaster is the accused person? So, and he knew, all the, he knew this all along. And a prudent person who will have, at this, that particular point, having known his close relationship and legal representation of Wafula Chebukati should have sat in these proceedings. But we knew he was uh, responding to his master. He's done as per script, it was expected. But I will assure our supporters that we are now going to the real and actual seat of justice where we will now litigate real issues of law. We just came here because it's part of the, the, the law required us to start from here. The law had assumed that you must start from IBC dispute committee before you can go to the High Court. So if you went to the High Court prematurely, that question will have arose that why are you going to the High Court before exhausting this little process down here? We've now exhausted the, legal, the little legal process. We are now competent and ready enough to deal with the real questions before a court of justice, the High Court of Kenya. Thank you very much. Was this information known to you before? We discovered this information late last night when a public spirited individual informed us that this George Murugu is actually a partner in a law firm that is representing uh, Wafula Chebukati and has actually been filing documents on his behalf. And he failed to declare that conflict of interest, which is very key in the termination of any dispute. He should have done that. Yes. When we need to render this mandatory? So that I've, 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 having sat as a judge in his <coughs> client's own course, you can all clearly see that the decision that they are making by itself is itself null and void. It's not a decision that is founded in law. The decision that is founded on a conflict of interest between the presiding officer and the respondent, the accused person in the proceedings. Yes. One question. Yes. When may be due then to file the petition of the uh, We have been ready since uh, the 6th of June. So we're just waiting for them to give us a copy of their ruling and we'll be able to file immediately. Yes. Maybe Wakili, one last one. Why do you think uh, the IBC chairman, Wafula Chebukati, is determined to lock you in the presidential candidate? You see, Wafula Chebukati is uh, answering to our master. And I'll say this, as Cheney said in the United States of America, that your master will one day go home. That is not in doubt. But the dishonor that you are doing to yourself will live with you for the rest of your life. So it is a spirited effort to stop His Excellency Jimmy Wanjigi from being on the ballot. He is the real candidate in this election. The others are the real pace setters for him. It's like the coming, the second coming. The real candidate is on the way, and you'd obviously expect the pace setters to be uncomfortable when the Safina, when Noah's Ark comes to save the people of Kenya from the economic troubles they've been having, from the bad governance they've been taken through, from the corruption, from Jubilee's 10 years of pain, 10 is enough. We cannot continue going forward with the last 10 years of Jubilee's pain. And the only person who can put a stop to those 10 years of pain is His Excellency Jimmy Wanjiki. And they know it. That is why we are having this spirited fight against his campaign and his candidature. There are three legal questions that uh, form the basis of the ruling. Yes. And uh, it says that should one uh, be found to be against the law, then the entire petition lacks merit. Are you confident that when you go to the High Court uh, that your petition will 
Of course, on, on, on all those three grounds, let me just address you very briefly. Ground number one, that we are insufficient supporters in, in one county. In their own decision, they accept, they acknowledge that we submitted supporters' signatures for one extra county, which met the target. But we're only missing seven, according to them. In fact, they had plucked those seven. But we submitted nine, and it met the tally. Then now, all of a sudden, the chairman, Chibukati Stuj, comes up and says that you submitted your signatures at 4.12 past the time, working hours. They are sitting here at midnight to render ruling. What are the working hours? Or oh, does it only apply when it's Jimmy and Jiggy sitting? But then they can sit at midnight to purport to conduct hearings. But him, when he presents his papers, 12 minutes allegedly past the, past the time, they claim that now it's too late, we cannot accept. For, for, for. And then the other issue of uh, the... In fact, the supporter signature for the 12 was submitted in time. When the, running, the other question was on the running mates certificate. The certificate was presented. In fact, the official nomination was done on the 16th of May. And IBC accepted. The certificate which they asked for was presented to them on the 6th of June. They refused to accept it. Now this court is saying, because we didn't provide it, we cannot allow it. But it is part of the bundle of documents in the pleadings. They can see it was submitted. The third question that they're relying on, that they're using, is that it actually doesn't have university qualification. I must say this. Jimmy Wanjigi is a master student at Desta University. He has concluded and passed all his undergraduate course. And the university has since admitted him to a master's program. He's doing his final year in master's. The High Court of Kenya, in two cases, have confirmed that once you have met the requirements of concluding your studies, passing your exams, and having completed those studies, you cannot, you are deemed to be a university degree holder. You don't have to wait for a graduation ceremony. You see why Kenya is lagging behind the kind of leadership, nonsense leadership we have here. Harvard University didn't conduct graduation ceremony for the last two years because of the COVID pandemic in the world. They just did their last first graduation last year in November. So are you trying to say that those who completed their studies in Harvard in two years when Corona was at its height were not graduates? They are not degree holders? So it's, they are trying to adopt a mechanical, pedantic, pedestrian, and stupid way to interpret the law. This committee purports to think that they can speak with more authority than the High Court of Kenya. I mean, Justice Lenaola is a judge of the Supreme Court of Kenya today. In 2013, he spoke on what the law is when interpreting Section 22.2 of the Elections Act. Now, this committee, presided over by Chebukati's own personal lawyer, purports now that he can speak authoritatively more than Justice Lenaola. Justice Ogola, in 2013, gave a similar determination like Justice Lenaola on the same question of interpreting Section 22.2 of the Elections Act. Now, this same student thinks he can speak better than Justice Ogola. I mean, let's be serious. There must be respect of the hierarchy of courts in this country. These are fuzz. They're actually making a mockery of our constitution and justice system. And it's our duty as a people to call them out. And that is why, for the first time in my practice in law, I have walked out of proceedings when the final determination is being read, because I felt it was actually, they were actually defiling the seats of justice. Because justice requires you to be very particular on the law, to be very fair in your processes, so that if a high court has spoken on an issue, however much you disagree with it as a lower court, as a committee, you only but have to apply what the high court has said. The most you can do is to set out your reasons why you disagree. Say, I disagree because of A, B, C, D. But then finally you say, however, my hands are tied because a higher court has spoken about it. So until the day they change that position, I cannot do anything as a lower court. But look at what they are doing here. So this is what we are going to change. Kenyans are suffering every day in their hands. I've watched the IBC proceedings have been here since four in the evening. Of all the cases they were reading, their rulings on. 99% of those cases have been dismissed. 99% of more than 300 cases filed, 99% have been dismissed. I mean, when you say that access, are you trying to say that IBC is so good, the attorney officers are so good that 
when people come to us to be given a second chance to explain themselves, they are found that they were once on the wrong, but IBC was very right. I witnessed a case where somebody was being, his case was being dismissed merely because he gave a banker's check in a bank that the returning officer didn't know. <laughs> I mean, why are we making a fuss of our democracy? IBC, in the same tribunal, the same committee, I witnessed another person who was rejected, allegedly, because when he appeared for presentation, he was, he was late. Not, not late for the day, late by a few minutes. And he was saying he was late because the police had arrested him. And he had a letter from the police, he had an OB number. In fact, the police released him. When he, his supporters came and prevailed upon them, begged them to release him, he was 25 minutes late. They've stopped him, that he can't be a candidate. I mean, when you sit to listen to what nonsense is going on here, you actually not feel, I don't even feel sorry for ourselves. I feel sorry for the poor Kenyans whose franchise is being defiled by this committee. And this goes beyond even his excellence. And I believe God has brought us through this so that we can witness for ourselves the injustice that majority of Kenyans who've come to seek justice are being subjected to by the IBC committees. In Walter Nyambane's case, they reduced his case to be asking him why did he transfer from Kenyatta University to Desta University, as if that's an issue that should be of concern to them. So that is very unfair. And that is what our administration, when we take power, we commit to the people of Kenya that they will know what justice is. Justice is what is right, and justice is doing what is the will of God. And that is what we believe we shall do when we sit in office from the 9th of August after we are elected. Thank very you. Sana. Um, mine will be very brief. Let me first uh, thank uh, my good lawyers, most especially my running mate, for doing an excellent job in uh, seeking justice in our case. I want our supporters and Kenyans at large to understand that this is a journey, and a journey that we are determined to complete. There is no holder to the office of president that has not gone through these challenges. Jomo Kenyatta faced the injustice of jail before he became president. I can tell you that I was witness to the agony that Uhuru Kenyatta was facing before he became president. And it is shocking to see the injustice he used to claim was befalling him. Now he wants it to befall others, such as myself. This country has come a long way in expanding the democratic space. And what we are witnessing today and every day that this IEBC keeps trying to purport to have an election is a muffling of democracy. We are going back to the dark days that we witnessed before the multi-party era. Kenyans rejected that time. We will reject it again here. And let me tell you, those that are perpetuating this injustice to us and many Kenyans, you shall face the wrath of the people of Kenya. We had chaos in this country before because there was a belief that the institutions, specifically the election authority and the courts, were not places of fair play. Buana Chibukati and Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta don't tempt the spirit of peaceful, loving Kenyans. Do not tempt them to take courses that are going to be detrimental to this great nation of ours. And I want to remind you all and the supporters that we have so far gathered, many, many Kenyans, that there is absolutely no man no man that can shut a door God has opened for you. Amen. Hakuna, hakuna. Amen. 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 Asante ni sana.